Hi everyone, this is the Chuta Baba from Nightlight Astrology, and today I am taking a moment to sit down and do an update, an astrological update on the coronavirus. Now, when the coronavirus first started hitting the United States, and um, I think this was probably sometime back in March now, if I'm thinking about it correctly, um, I did a video with a horary that kind of initially demonstrated what was happening with the uh, coronavirus most likely outcome for us in the United States. And then I've done a few updates here or there to sort of follow up on the transits. And so I'm just going to do a quick update today. This is not uh, anything that's meant to be super in-depth. It's just meant to give you a little update as to where we are right now with the astrology and what the astrology is most likely pointing us toward in terms of the rest of the year uh, with the coronavirus. So I've had a lot of people asking me, I haven't done one for a while. Uh, frankly, it's weird. It's just kind of, I've just gotten used to living in the, you know, like love in the time of Corona. So it, it's just, uh, it's been a weird time. I'm, I wonder how all of you are doing. I would love to hear your stories, especially if you have any really poignant astrological transits that you've experienced that have coincided with, you know, the coronavirus affecting your job, or maybe you've actually got it or a family member had it. Or so if you have astrological transits to share in relation to your experience of it thus far, I'd love to hear it in the comments section. Um, meanwhile, let's take a look. So here we are in July. And um, what we're going to do is, uh, first of all, just trace out one of the things that we have already said was that you know January we had the um, Pluto Saturn conjunction and then uh, not long after we had Jupiter come into conjunction with Pluto and the initial predictions that I had were even dating to last year well before the uh, pandemic was that you know Saturn Pluto can imply such such things we talked about plagues we talked about pandemics we talked about natural disasters political upheaval lots of stuff that happened under Saturn and uh, Pluto transits. So if you want to go back to last year, if you haven't listened to those yet, um, look for Jupiter entering Capricorn, Saturn in Capricorn, Saturn Pluto uh, videos, and Saturn Pluto panel talk that I held. Lots of good information that kind of takes you back in time so you can revisit that whole trajectory, which is kind of nice to do to get a whole overview of where things have been, how they were predicted before it all happened, and how we're carrying it forward now. Later in the spring, um, I did a video suggesting that in mid to late May, as planets were basically moving away from, um, you, you had a, kind of some distancing and uh, what looked like a period of relief or um, almost like, um, uh, what's the right word, uh, relaxing of the tensions that had come through in the first part of the year. I said that it would be short-lived, which we did because then social distancing relaxed here in the United States anyway, and we started to see a big um, uh, drop of our, of our, of our um, social distancing um, guidelines and things like that. But I said um, that it was possible that by the end of June that we would see another big spike and the reason for that was both the retrograde of Saturn coming back into Capricorn out of early Aquarius, um, where I thought that it was possible that once Saturn got into Aquarius, the, the narrative shifted slightly, and it did. Um, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, the protests and riots, um, uh, every, everything that had, had been happening socially really started taking off after Saturn entered Aquarius, um, and, and it really sort of peaked as Saturn was... Um, sitting down uh, before turning retrograde and so forth. So uh, really interesting um, just to watch that whole process play out of Saturn entering Aquarius, going backward, et cetera. The theme and the narrative kind of shifted. Now you'll notice it's sort of back to coronavirus. And I mean, there's a lot of things still going on, but a lot of the major news outlets are starting to really focus on coronavirus again. And why? Well, Jupiter got back into the conjunction with Pluto, which is where it was when everything exploded this past spring. So one of the predictions that I had made was that if we were to see a recurrence or a resurgence or a second wave or a spike in the continued wave or whatever, we would probably see it late June, which is what we're seeing now with daily records being set for, and it's early July now, but late June, early July, that there would be this kind of explosion of Jupiter-Pluto again. Remember Jupiter, widespread, expansive um, growth, but in with Pluto. So something that's dark, subterranean uh, something that's viral, something that's Saturnine, something that includes death, something that you know um, 
it matches very well with what, with what we're seeing right now in the United States, which, which is record setting day after day after day after day with cases on the rise. So that's Jupiter and Pluto getting back together again. So how does the narrative shift? Well, uh, it's going to be a very turbulent rest of the year with Mars and Aries for the whole rest of the year in a square with Saturn and uh, Pluto and Jupiter. Um, it, it is just a very dynamic rest of 2020. But watch what happens. So what we want to do is just trace out. You're going to see Jupiter with Pluto pretty much through July within that three degree range of what we call an engagement which is where it's most intense. And that's when you're probably going to see this proliferation of this month of July may um, end up taking us back to previous conditions. And that started at the end of June. And again, this is what we talked about in the last video that I did on the coronavirus. Now, um, if I go forward again, we're going to see that once um, we get around to the end of summer, you're going to see these three planets in Capricorn changing directions again. First, it's Jupiter, who stations and turns direct around September 13th or 14th, right at the same time that Mars turns retrograde, by the, by the way. Interesting. Um, doing a separate video on that later in the summer. But um, Jupiter turns direct. And then what you're going to see is if you follow it out just a little bit more, Saturn is then going to station by the end of September. So this is the 28th and then Saturn stations and turns direct. Now this should represent some kind of turning point. It, it's not gonna happen overnight, but there should be the signal of some initial victory or some initial movement forward, I would think. That's a, you know, educated guess. Um, because the retrograde means reversals, things are moving forward, and in this next forward, you know, thrust of movement from these planets, they are both going to leave Capricorn, and Jupiter is going to leave its fall by the end of the year, and this is starting right now. So this is by the end of September. That's also happening as Saturn is in uh, Mars is in a retrograde square with Saturn, which has the feeling of potential. Um, what do I want to call it? Containment or um, the, the feeling of being able to marshal resources or to mobilize resources under pressure for some kind of heroic um, mission. Um, I get the feeling that by you know the end of September, October, that we could see, for example, a vaccine trial that's more widespread or some kind of um, initiative or, or shift in the way that things are being handled. I could be wrong, but it seems to me like this would be a powerful turning point. Again, because those both Jupiter and Saturn back to back in September turning direct, and then their trajectory is to then move together out of Capricorn. But they do have to pass one more test, and that is that Jupiter is going to get back together with Pluto. And we're going to see this occurring starting about the middle of November. So right about mid-November, they get together. About the, the 10th through the 15th is like the, the hot zone for them. And they move along. And then from there, you're going to see the Jupiter-Pluto brings one big more, one more big, you know, kind of explosion of, of energy. Then what happens? Well, Jupiter is then going to, with Saturn, first Saturn leaves uh, Capricorn. And you're going to see that right around December 17th. Jupiter then enters Aquarius right around the 19th. And then look at this. On the winter solstice, Jupiter and Saturn will conjoin in Aquarius. Now, again, the narrative is going to shift dramatically with Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. Usually, Jupiter-Saturn conjunctions, which we'll be doing a lot of videos on later in the year, will coincide with some kind of changing of the guard politically, socially, the the fabric of society goes through some kind of reboot and sometimes it's it's a kind of conservative reboot because this is saturn sign it or but it but it also could mean that there is some new standard some new structure the foundation of something new being laid that's you know has some aura of of hope surrounding it that would be my brightest interpretation though i'm cautious because of the dominance of saturn in in the sky and you've got a mars Mars is still in Aries with a square to Pluto at this time. So it is some kind of um, groundbreaking moment in, I would think, the, the social fabric of our lives, of our realities. But this is also a time where, you know, Jupiter picks up dignity. It's no longer in its fall. Uh, that's much better. Saturn has strength and is no longer in the tango with Pluto in Capricorn. So, um, to me, the, by the end of the year, the narrative changes again. And I think that it's going to mean that 
the that we're at the at least the beginning of the end of the pandemic. Now, by that I mean that we're something is going to start happening. I think by September, but then you know maybe by early in the new year we start to see um, you know the foundation being laid for a, a, a kind of resolution or um, some kind of um, fix, some kind of um, help that's on its way. Because again, because when you see Jupiter Saturn conjunctions, they often they they often bring this feeling of um, uh, a new a new vision for the future. That the, the groundwork uh, is being laid for it, and it, it's it's hopeful and it's bright, but it doesn't come right away. It's in a fixed sign too, so it's going to take a while. But I think September and December, there's two moments there where the narratives, the momentum seems to shift. So that's, that's what I'm looking at as the, you know, probably the, and this is what I said, the very first video that I did outside of the horary that I did, which was just a, a transit look at the rest of the year. I'm in step with pretty much the exact same interpretation. So and I, even in an interview that I did in last July of 2019, I talked about how, you know, there's a tale of two 2020s. Um, and one of them, you know, is basically the Saturn Pluto conjunction at the beginning of the year, but it's bookended by this more hopeful turning point that comes toward the end of the year with the retrogrades in September, the, the stopping, turning direct Jupiter and Saturn. And then in December, Jupiter and Saturn getting together in early Aquarius where, yeah, the narrative just seems to to shift and the, the groundwork for some kind of future is being laid. And, and usually with Jupiter, there's an element of hope or progress involved. Again, I'm slightly hesitant about that uh, because Saturn is still powerful, but Jupiter out of its fall gives me hope for real uh, structural reform. And also, um, you know, if we have a, a chance for there to be some advancement in therapeutics or a vaccine or something like that that would come along, I know some people are not into vaccines, but something that could... Um, help us to uh, move past this. I think it would, you'd start to see it with that conjunction. That's my hope. I could be totally wrong. We'll see. It's going to be a very interesting 2021 because Jupiter and Saturn will be in a square with Uranus. So the forces of progress and, and change and revolution and rebellion and the need to be emanci emancipated or liberated from, from conditions that are more restrictive um, and, and breakthroughs in science and technology and, and social, like in, in law, in societal law. Those will be big conversations in 2021 with um, Jupiter and Saturn, both square Uranus. So that, that push-pull between revolution and, and contraction, refinement, discipline, slowness, those are themes that we'll definitely be spending a lot of time with close to the end of the year as well into next year. So um, yeah, that's what I've got for now. Uh, this is kind of a, uh, a, a real, I'm realizing as I'm doing it that it's sort of a sprawling update. Um, but I know that a lot of people have been asking and wanted to know my thoughts. So those are my thoughts. But honestly, like I don't pride myself on getting these things right. I, I, I when I sit and look at these things, I don't ever sit down and be like, you know, like, ah, uh, yes, now that is exactly what will happen. And here's my formal prediction. And I hope that it really raises my subscriber total or something like that. You know, I might, I don't think about it that way. I just, um, I like, I feel like a karmic weatherman and I'm just uh, looking at the patterns and, and making, you know, educated statements about what I think is coming, but I'm always learning something new. I'm always surprised. Um, and, uh, and also, you know, it's really, it is really rewarding to see them, uh, to see so many predictions play out in ways that you're expecting, but not exactly what you're expecting. So for example, last year, one prediction that was really like amazing to me was there was an antitia between um, Mars and Jupiter. And with Jupiter in its fall and Mars in, in Capricorn and Mars in Sagittarius, if I remember correctly, and I had said that, that it was possible because of the Antitia that, a, a, that someone of great prominence or, or rank, a sports figure, a military leader, a political figure would, would, would die in a dramatic fashion. And that was the week that uh, Kobe Bryant died. Um, I never would have guessed that. You know what I mean? And I, and, I, and I actually wasn't thinking exclusively of an athlete. I was thinking more of a political or like military figure. I was going for the Mars angle and not thinking athlete as much as I was thinking like um, executive leader of some kind. But uh, Kobe Bryant was sort of that too. So 
there's always these, the transits are always anyway, just reflecting the the transits are always um, archetypally, you can always kind of see what's coming, but what's coming, but they're also surprising you in the exact way that they turn out where you kind of go, yeah, there it is. But it, there's this, this, this little um, turn of the symbolism that I never could have predicted. And in that way, I feel like that for me, astrology's primary function in my life is as is it's a way of reflecting on and contemplating the nature of experience and of life itself, which I, I find to be more rewarding really than knowing what's coming because you know, you're going to live through what's coming either way, knowing to some extent what's coming and reflecting on it and then reflecting in hindsight upon it with these uh, eternal archetypal symbols I find to be the reward in and of itself. So Anyway, all of that is to say, I would love to hear your own um, reflections on the astrology. How do you think the t- rest of 2020 is going to go? Um, I would love to hear how you see these transits uh, playing out with regard to uh, world events in general. There's a lot of other significations outside of the coronavirus that those exact same transits that I just mentioned could apply to. So, um, you know, there'll be time to reflect on, on those kinds of things later in the year as well. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll talk to you again soon.